Hey YouTube, this is Drone Tastic. I'm your uh, host Dan. Um, want to uh, encourage you to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe um, to this uh, channel, and uh, I'll be able to let you know what's coming up, or you'll know when I post something new, and you can comment and let me know what else you'd like to see. Um, I had some really crappy soldering irons in the past, and uh, you saw me with my recent video with the Weller WES 51. Uh, I'm running that right now. I got her cranked up to about 70, 750 degrees, uh, as you can see from the dial there on the front. It is a very nice iron. Um, I've already been playing. I desoldered the old connection and solder sucked all the solder out of everything. Uh, I'm attempting now to do a new solder job on the connector on this battery that's loose here it's been removed and uh, now it needs to be um, according to them I'm just gonna play by their rules for a minute here maybe I'll get some likes um, you go in there it's like a pack of wolves on RC groups you go into there post anything about soldering that they don't agree with and the pack of wolves comes running so uh, today uh, I'm gonna just try to make them happy okay I don't think they think I know how to solder. So let's get started. I'm gonna adjust this camera now. All right, there you can see the set of helping hands. There was some talk in the channel about how, oh, let me get some of this out of the way. There, there was some talk in the channel about how, you know, some of these guys are, they, uh, they like to put their XT60 male end on the other side of the connector to keep things in line and it helps to dissipate heat. Now, I state that this is, uh, let's see, here you can see from this angle I think, uh, this is one half, almost three quarters of an inch. So they're looking at three quarters of an inch of conductor, which is thin brass and uh, it's not really going to do them much good. So I like the alligator clips. Um, they don't necessarily care for them. They want to see the connector in to keep the pins aligned. Um, as you can see very closely, they are very well aligned. They are in a housing that holds them that way. And the connector is, it's heat resistant. It's not as delicate. And if they are soldering delicate connectors, they need to get a refund. There are some XT60 connectors out there that will not stand up to uh, the temperatures above 350 degrees. Um, so, and there are some YouTube videos about that. So have a have a look uh, when you get a chance. So I'm going to try and get this thing in a position where I can actually solder it. I'm only in the negative port on the battery on the connector. I'm sorry, the XT60 connector. Uh, maybe I'll fight with that after I tend the wire, shall we? Here's the wire. I got all of it out of there and now I'm going to put it back in. So, according to everybody there, this is very, very important. If you don't tin it, you're not going to get solder inside of the, the connector and it's going to be bad and I probably should use a thicker portion. And there was talk that I should use a blade connector here. This is some Radio Shacks, oh, silver bearing solder. I don't want that. That's going to be too hard to melt. I want this lead solder. It's 60-40 or 40-60. Alpha Metals Incorporated. I don't even know if they're around anymore. I've had this for 10 years or longer. So, uh, all right, let's try this again. I'm going to heat this connector up. Heating, heating, heating. I might even, maybe I'll even put it up on the top there so I can get something going. And then, yeah, there we are. That got on there and in there very nicely. Okay, and there's my really shiny tinned end. Right? That's tinned, right? That's what tinning looks like? Feel free to comment. Comment, share, subscribe. Please let me know. I want to be a good solderer so I can post more videos like this without without raising the ire of my fellow forum members. All right, so I would now like to get that magnifying glass out of the darn way. It doesn't look like I really need that thing. Okay, so now I'm going to put these alligator clips in the connector for the negative end. Now that negative end 
Uh, it needs to have some sort of heat sink in it, right? So it doesn't melt and become out of alignment or whatever everybody else is afraid of in that situation. And now I'm going to put a little, a little of this in the cup. Just a little, I just want to tin it, right? It's all about, it's all about tinning for these guys. Got to tin it, tin, tin, tin. Rin it, rin, tin, tin. I don't know, I think that looks like a pretty good job. There's some solder in there. Appears to be, appears to be tin. Okay, now, if all goes well, I bring these two together. I really do like this iron a lot. A lot. And I would like to thank WJH from RC Groups for, uh, and, and others, uh, for suggesting this iron. Um, it's made my life easier. I do enjoy the fact that, once again, I'm not working with a cheapo 30 watt soldering iron, which is probably good for most small jobs around the house if you're willing to suffer. But uh, you know, this, just look at that. Just heat from the tip now. It's gonna take a second. You know, take his eye, may even come up the side, just kind of working it around, working it around, bringing it downtown. Oh my goodness! Yeah, she got soldered all right, but she's not in the, she's not in the cup yet. I didn't quite line that up properly. Okay, now that looks right. Let's try this again. I probably need more solder, but I kind of want to seat that in the tinned area see now I mean for what it's worth I mean they're not terrible they're not totally wrong tinning the connector does make it easier to get that wire to stick when it comes time to actually solder it but um, it's not really working out for me today apparently this negative lead is kind of short Probably why I soldered it first the last time. Okay. Okay, so I think I think that's good. We're gonna give it a do a little bit here. There we go. There she is. Oh no, she popped out. This is terrible. I'm starting to burn my fingers. Not liking it. I suppose I should get the shrink tubing on first, eh? Okay, I suppose it helps to have some new shrink tubing when you're doing this. So let's try that. And yeah, I know I'm using bolt cutters. Some other dude commented on that the other day. Uh, some of these commenters on uh, YouTube are just, they're downright nasty. I just, uh, I get it. I'm gonna put myself out here. I'm, I'm gonna have to put up with it. Uh, or at least deal with it in some form. So get that alligator clip in there. I really uh, let's try. I need some weight, really. Something. Maybe I should desolder the hot connector too, or the red connector, the, the positive connector. And try it that way. Okay. Let's just try getting that seated in there. I'm gonna kinda of try to rush it in. I am at 700 and some degrees, so. Oh, it's so shiny. So shiny and pretty. All right. I don't know that I'm getting the shrink tubing over that, but I'll give it a shot. Before I do that, I'll let it cool for a second. We're gonna give it the stress test, the mechanical test. Oh yes, nice and tight, very tight, tight like a toyger. All right, now let's put this bad boy over top. Much to the chagrin of those I said I wouldn't do this again with, uh, I'm just gonna just lightly brush this over the plastic because it will shrink the shrink tubing. It'll do a fine job of it. Some guy said you need to have a heat gun. Well, I have one, but uh, I have one outlet on this table, and right now it's being used for the Weller, which is much more worthy of the power I'm consuming. 
And that's that. Now the end is on. She's tight. Everything is beautiful. Uh, let's see about uh, a voltage test, shall we? All right, we're looking for 11 point some volts here. She's on right now. There's nothing there right now. I don't even know. Let's even turn this. I'm going to even adjust the camera. Okay. There's a voltmeter. Let's make sure I got some connectivity. Eleven point four, right about storage voltage. Excellent. I'd like to show you inside the connector. Once again, you can see in there those connectors have not moved. They're not out of alignment. There is more than enough body in there to prevent them from moving around. And maybe the alignment issue is more with the male end of the connector, which has the prongs inside. Um, but I haven't had any problems with that either. So. Um, I don't really have a way to test the amps coming out of this, but uh, I guess I have to run this thing at some point and let you know how it came out. But uh, as far as I can tell, it looks as good as any of the other solder joints I've made. And, uh, you know, she's, she's tough. They're not coming out. So, and I can, you know, shake and dangle and she's not coming out. This will be fine in any of our RC aircraft. So, all right, there we are. The new Weller in action on the E-Flight 3S 3000 milliamp hour battery that came with my uh, Blade uh, 350QX3. Uh, I'm gonna keep putting this back in the rotation. She's been fine so far with the old solder joints. I just wanted to show these guys. I, I know what's up. I just don't think it's necessary, once again. Um, but, uh, Hey, to each his own. You can choose to do it whichever way you like. As long as your mechanical and electrical connections are good and your batteries are providing the power they need when you're under load. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's your gear. You can do what you like with it. But uh, this is method number two. And uh, a good iron makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I, can't, I can't say that enough. This Weller is awesome and it's going to serve me well for the rest of my life hopefully uh, they, they're a good name supposedly they don't uh, they don't break down very often so all right I'd like to thank you for watching uh, I'd like to encourage you to once again uh, subscribe like share and comment uh, and I hope to see you again have a great night take care